As we gather in vigil, uh, we uh, remember uh, one of God's sons, Joseph Lawson House, first bishop of the Diocese of Biloxi. Born 1923, August 30th, and a son of Albert Otis House, Sr. and Helen Lawson, born in Daphne, Alabama. He attended Most Pure Heart of Mary Elementary School in Mobile, and so from the beginning, he had a Catholic influence on him. However, the first part of his life, he um, uh, was with his family, finding God first in the Baptist Church, and then in the Methodist Church, and then eventually in the Catholic Church. He graduated valedictorian of his class. That's a wow moment. Uh, and all throughout, he was searching for God in the midst of the times of those days. He shared that the segregation that was in the country didn't hit him and his family as hard as it did others, but he did have to sit in the back of the bus when he first was growing up, and he did have to be in those different circumstances. And so it was really a time of uh, um, change that was taking place, both for him, but also for the country. And part of the call to faith uh, for us within the sacrament of baptism is the light that is lit for us at our baptism. And that happened for Bishop House. And that light was given to him, just as we heard in the Gospel, to be in vigil, waiting for the Lord, to be a person of prayer, to be a person of the Word of God, to be a person of the sacraments of the church, and to let God speak in his life. And in a real way, that's what happened. God spoke in his life. In fact, to his, his utter surprise, and I'm sure the surprise to his family too, God called him to the priesthood. And God said, I want you to serve my people, and I want you to help bring them together. I want you to help love them together. In his first years, and I've spoken to a few of his classmates and friends, were not easy as a priest. He was poor as a church mouse, uh, and yet he still desired to serve the Lord and to witness to Christ. And again, holding the candle of faith, holding that light of Christ, and letting that light speak through his life. And as he served in North Carolina and, and uh, various places, and uh, eventually uh, the famous phone call happens. And having gotten one of those phone calls, I can tell you it's a life changer. And so Pope Paul VI called him to be a bishop in Natchez, Jackson, and appointed November 8, 1972. Uh, and served there until he was named the first bishop of Biloxi. And it really is uh, an amazing moment and a, a moment of faith. He's, he, he recalled his first confirmation that he had, and, and it was in a parish where they had had some difficulty, and he was really nervous about going. Uh, and. Yet he went and he found that the people were there with open arms to love him, to care for him, and to accept him as their bishop and to celebrate the sacrament of confirmation for their children. And in many ways, that's what followed all the way through his time 
as a bishop. To start a diocese is quite daunting. And to uh, begin all that is to take on. And the fact that we are now 43 parishes, 10 missions, 58,000 Catholics, 15 schools. I had some kids ask me the other day, how many children do you have? I said, 4,000. <laughs> and they went, what? Now, Bishop House, I think, would be the first to say that he was not perfect. And he definitely would not want me to be named him a saint today, I can tell you. He would not want me to go there. Uh, but I think as a, as a people, as his family, as his friends, as those that have served with him, we can give thanks for the gift of his life in our lives. And... Uh, and the, the light of Christ that was shown through him, that light that was held really all through his life. It was really only in the last two years that I've gotten to, to know him and to be with him a bit. Uh, and uh, I'm deeply grateful, by the way, and I think the whole diocese is for all of you that helped him and were with him. I'm not gonna name names because I'm gonna get in trouble if I start doing that. So, just know who you are, and we appreciate you. Um, he stayed engaged, really, all throughout that time. Not able to see, and eventually not able to walk, but he stayed engaged. And so he would quiz me on things that were going on in the world and the like, and when I'd go in to see him. And he'd ask me about world events, and, and we'd talk about it a bit, and, I'd tell him what was going on, and he would say, just simply, man, that's stupid. <laughs> can't, they, can't they figure that out? And I said, evidently not, Bishop. Evidently not. Um, so he loved the church, and he cared about the church with his humanity. And that includes our sinfulness as a people. Uh, but he also got to see the church and our area begin to come together in love so that that which separates us is beginning to break down and to call us together as a people to truly love one another and care for one another. And in many ways I think that's why um, Pope Paul VI called him to be a bishop, to say to us, come together, love one another as I have loved you, Jesus said to us. So we lift him up in prayer tonight and pray that he truly does rest in the peace of Christ and that he doesn't suffer anymore. That he's with the Lord. That's our prayer. Let's pray for our, our bishop house.